I think the the artists in the previous generation definitely had more character to them. Like like you, the market would not dictate their art. Of course, um, like Hussain Saab or a lot of um, artists wanted to have a good life. They would try on controversy. All that was there. So the markets were always important. But at least that didn't die there. They would still draw what they wanted to draw, make what they wanted to make. Nobody could actually say that "Acha, we want this painting in this color and this size." Whereas today, I feel uh, if somebody gets to know, like that, this is a successful uh, mantra or a successful idea, they just they find it very hard to move away from it. Like it just becomes their style, and then they just. Find it very hard to break through from that. So 2002, 2003 is when we were starting it. So it was just the turn of the century. Like people were getting interested in art, and people were quite curious to see how uh, like new art was doing. And 2003 to 2006, we also saw prices rapidly changing. Uh, and auctions for Indian art started doing very well. So, like Indian art being a part of, let's say, few international auctions, now there were independent auctions of Indian art both in India and abroad. Christie, Sotheby's, Ocean. But uh, like I said, just the timing of the entire art circle at that time was just very good and very conducive for, uh, like, a new gallery, a new space, a bigger space. But uh, yeah, as as the kind of uh, markets crashed a little bit, and also at that time because the prices went up in 2008 or 9, so uh, artists which are selling for like 50,000 in a span of 14 months went to like six lakhs or seven lakhs, and of course the whole artist gallery relation I feel has kind of changed. Like earlier there was a mutual respect. Like the uh, the artists knew that we need the gallery for our survival, and, and the galleries, of course, then again would look after their artists, would always exhibit them. But right now, like I said, it's more like a free for all. Like every artist is with every gallery, and every gallery is with every, like is promoting every artist. So it's more about what you can get at a good value and sell. Like it's not about those loyalties that okay, this is my gallery, I don't be. And then of course the clients also they. Kind of make e uh, like different galleries fight against each other in a way because earlier you could command that thing that okay this is our gallery artist you can go wherever you want normally an artist at least in the same city would not have multiple galleries mm. they might give one work for a show or something but essentially they'll say this is my gallery but yeah today it's not like that I think in an art market which now uh, has gone through a bit of the growth stage and there are so many leaders. So there would be there would be people who would follow that uh, the dealer model and just these uh, buy and sell models. But at least the established galleries are the galleries that uh, want to call themselves proper galleries and want to stand uh, the test of time. I feel they would should definitely adopt this model wherein they should they should look at artists, see what they like, see what their language is, and then try and uh, make a lineup of artists that they believe in, nurture them, promote them. A lot of galleries are kind of working more as dealers than galleries because historically galleries were supposed to have a lineup of artists and work with them, nurture them, promote their work. But right now, it's all like a very short-sighted uh, circle dealership that's happening. We started this Ravijan annual scholarship program wherein uh, we would send invitations to all the uh, art colleges across India, even some informal art colleges. So, of course, we used to get a lot of response like almost 200 300 entries would come in. In every year, we have a jury of four to five artists, critics, uh, diplomats, general public, just art loving people. So, together, it's a panel comprising of five to six people. And they would choose about uh, four to five 
artists, sculptors every year. Okay. And uh, so yeah, now it's almost 26 years, so it's given us almost 100 artists okay. over the years that have been added in the gallery lineup, and they've all done well both nationally and internationally. Okay. I think we do need to kind of do a slightly bigger effort in terms of keeping in touch with them because over the years some have stayed in touch but some have kind of drifted away, they've either moved out of India or they've just whatever reasons lost touch. And also the centres of art keep changing. So, uh, so it's also important to kind of keep seeing different centres in which uh, which center at that time is doing the most relevant work and is kind of coming up well. So I've seen a lot of, uh, you know, like a lot of the uh, uh, artists or a lot of this thing, they've actually got a very strong community which kind of uh, supports them or follows them also. But again, like um, art should be used as a form of expression. Online presence, I think overall has become important. So that's something that uh, we would really like to look into. But, uh, and that's to do with both media as well as websites and uh, portals because uh, like I said, the, uh, the conventional auction models and all these are focusing on a very narrow section of artists. But when an established gallery uh, you no know, starts kind of bringing in a lineup of artists into the auction model or something that along with masters these are also artists that we are uh, like encouraging and that we are backing and online is an easier way to do it also because the infrastructure required or the, uh, the things that you can show the reach is that much higher so we as dealers uh, or we as galleries can still you know like go in for online buying because we ultimately, a lot of it is for trading or a lot of it is for the gallery stock. So even if we don't love it as much or as passionately, ultimately it's going there. But now with the phone and these apps, it's just become so simple. And most of these auctions have now started this thing in which you can actually, even when there's a physical auction, you can view the room online. And that just makes it very simple because then uh, you're actually almost there and you know what's happening and from where bids are coming in and just feel yeah there should be a good balance between a good concept and also skill like it should be all conceptual and no skill and also no skill because you could have very good concepts but if like you don't have good skill as an artist good drawing or and you're just using digital this thing and it, then it sometimes becomes a bit of a you know like a dilemma whether you can really call it an artwork Today's times, you also need your art to be relevant to something which people can relate to.